Hello everyone, my name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we're going to be talking about the most important lesson you can learn as a new kinkster or actually a kinkster of any experience level should probably learn this lesson. And before I get into what that is, I want to give a little bit of background first. So I was recently at Kinkfest, which if you don't know what that is, it's a really big annual convention for BDSM with classes and socials and performances and a really, really big dungeon. And this is the first year that I have been back in a couple of years and I am so glad I got to go again because Kinkfest is basically like my New Year's slash Christmas. Like it's, it's a really, really big deal for me personally. And this year, one of the people that was teaching at Kinkfest during the classes they have during the daytime was someone named Midori, who you may already be familiar with. They are one of the best educators, I think, currently talking about BDSM. Like seriously, if you see one of her classes available, like go check it out because they're always really, really good. And on one of the days at Kinkfest, one of the classes that Midori taught was about flogging. And this is not a video about flogging, but it'll make sense in a moment. So this class was jam packed to the gills, standing room only outside of the door of the classroom levels of participation in this. And during this flogging class, you know, there was the usual conversation about this is what a flogger is and da, 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 you know, the usual stuff you'd want to know about flogging. But the direction she took it after that was very interesting because typically with a flogging class, it'll be something like, here's what a flogger is. Here's the parts of a flogger. Here's where you should hit with the flogger. Here's where you shouldn't hit. This is how to hit properly. These are the steps and the techniques. And she kind of did that, but she put her own spin on it because one of the first things that she did was she gave a demo of doing a flogging. And it was unlike any other flogging I'd ever seen before. And I've been to a lot of dungeons, I've traveled, I've gone places, I've done international BDSM even. And when I say I've never seen anyone do a flogging like this, I mean that in the most positive way possible because she was using the flogger to like caress her partner's skin and going around the neck. And like there was this energy and this approach to the way that she did flogging where it almost wasn't even a flogging in an impact sense. It was like a breathing thing, a theater thing, a, an emotional thing. That's really what it was in the day. Like it was an emotional experience for the audience, for the participants, to everyone watching. It was a very deeply emotive experience, even though it looked nothing like the standard, you know, arm behind the back, boop, 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 you know, figure eight flogging you typically see every night at a dungeon at least twice. It was so different. And I think it really blew people's minds how different flogging could be. And while the demo was ongoing, she had told people to think about how it affected them in their head, in their heart, and in, you know, their nether regions. I, I did not think about the down there below, but certainly in my heart and in my head, it was very emotionally impactful. And you could see how emotive it was for everyone involved. It didn't necessarily cause tears, but the way I saw Midori, that bottom, the audience be affected by what happened with it being like she wasn't on a piece of furniture. She was just moving around the space, like circling the partner, using two floggers at once with one hand, with two different arms, you know, using one flogger to, you know, caress her partner, but then hitting with another. Like it was so everything. 
It was just, it was so everything. And I loved it so much getting to see that and it blew people's minds. And this is where we get into what the idea is, what the lesson is, which is, and I wanna be careful about how I say this because I don't want people to take the wrong thing away from this, is fuck the technicalities, fuck the procedures. Because I think I have seen over and over and over and over again, whether it be through the microization of labels, whether it be people obsessing over like doing things like technically exactly perfectly, but ignoring the emotional experience. Like I have seen over and over and over again that what is rewarding about BDSM can be on some level technical competence, but what is much more important, what will give you a scene that is 10 times better than that is the connection and the emotion you are able to evoke in that scene with awareness of what you're doing. It almost sort of reminds me of like maybe Picasso or one of the famous painters of like, you know, you know, I learned how to paint like, you know, the Renaissance painters and then it took me forever to learn how to paint like a child. Like it's, it's one of those sort of scenarios where you do have to learn the technical skills of why you're doing what you're doing of like how to safely wield a flogger to not give yourself rotator cuff damage. Like you do need to know that information but also when you're putting it in practice in the moment, I think it's interesting because as a community, we really pride ourselves on being different, of not being like vanillas, of going against the grain, of being creative, of being zany. And certainly you will see some zany scenes out there. You will see people, all rubber chickens are enduringly popular for some reason. You will see people doing scenes as clowns, you will see people doing scenes where they duct tape someone to a cross and then turn them into a receptacle for what I like, like a human trash can. Like you will, you will see people do very intense scenes, but they always follow a certain formula of expectations at the end of it. And I think this is most apparent in rope bondage, which has been technicalized both from a necessity perspective because of the safety issues involved with that and also because a certain demographic has that particular kink in North America by a stranglehold and it has not let go yet and I think I almost wonder how much of this is because at least where I live and where I go to so much of the kink community has been shaped by what left-brained cis-head men think is like what kink should be like and how that oftentimes gets masculinized into being a very hyper-logical, procedural, technical thing and not so much about the feelings unless the feeling is about sex. And then it's all about that. And there's something that is very valuable about not just focusing on the exact procedure of doing it and thinking about the feelings and about the emotions because I've even experienced going to conventions that focus on rope bondage that even in the classes that are presumably about making connection with the partner, it's still about the technical procedural way of doing that or how to apply that in a framework that coexists within the technicalities already being in place and like having to be there. And it's very surreal going to a convention and I think I've told this story before in an old video, but the last rope convention I went to, the rope craft one in Chicago, I wanna say that there was also one in Texas, I don't remember which one it was. Anyways, at one of the rope craft conventions, oftentimes with rope bondage, people will learn patterns. Oftentimes people assume rope is about knots, right? I gotta learn the knots, you'll hear people say that. Really, you need to know maybe like two or three knots maximum, and then after that it's applying rope in certain patterns, certain ways, with tensions and lock-offs and all sorts of things like that. I'm not gonna get into technicalities now. And you learn all that, and even knowing the basic knots, typically 
what conventions will center around is learning very complicated patterns. Like I have gone to classes where it's an hour and a half, two hours, where you are just standing there and learning one pattern the entire time not thinking about the connection, not thinking about the emotional experience it evokes in the bottom, not thinking about how it affects you emotionally as the top, but like point A, point B, point C, D, E, F, and then all the way around right until you're done. And I think that takes away a lot from the experience. And I saw what would happen at conventions like this is even before the play parties, people would be drained because they had to stand there and just do rope for two hours that was just about learning the technicalities and there was absolutely no emotion behind it. Which, as I had just learned from Midori's vlogging class, you are perfectly able to both teach people skills and also remind them of the emotional connection that's at the heart of everything that we do. And I think that's so important to learn very early on when you are getting into kink, when you're doing scenes as a top, as a bottom, it doesn't matter. That at the end of the day, what really gives the scene its flavor is not, oh, I know how to do all these knots. I know how to use a whip like this. I know how to do kink. Like learn the technical skills, yes. But the people I have seen in the scene have the most success over and over and over again are not the people who know how to do 50 different kinks to a very high level of technical ability. It's typically somebody who has one or two kinks they do very, very well and also are very emotionally connected. I have done scenes with people where they only do sensation play and they only do like they do like nails or scratching or whatever and that's what they focus on and the scenes I have had with that individual person have been so emotionally delicious and so good and so amazing. Same thing with rope bondage as well. The scenes are so emotionally good and so connective. It's always been about, are we here together in this moment doing this thing? Are you reading me? Am I reading you? And BDSM almost being about this experience of seeing someone else and that vulnerability and then them reflecting that back on you and getting the same thing back. I think vulnerability and emotions and connection are so oftentimes overlooked and people will rush through the connection, compatibility, vulnerability aspect of kink to do the big shiny thing they see people do at parties. They see people going up in the air and rope. They see people doing a double whipping. They see people doing, a, I don't know, a super heavy role play impact play scene where it goes on for two and a half hours and they go, I want to do that. And they want the visuals of it. They want the aesthetic of it, but they don't know how to make it work here. They don't know how to do that. It's just not part of the conversation. People are really, really good at knowing the ABCDs and they're really good at copying the aesthetic, but they miss the actual heart of it here. You know, it's something is just not there that it should be to be giving it the full experience. And I think this is where we get into some of the issues I've talked about before in earlier videos where I've discussed like the top merry-go-round problem where people expect a ride. They wanna be taken on an experience. And that means one person's having something that's very like emotionally deep maybe, but the other person to at the top is kind of just like, happy I'm doing this for you, yay, when do I get my emotional needs met? And I'm not really sure where to start solving this problem of helping people know how to express their emotions because what I think happens and why I want new people to know about this is I have heard from tops that have been doing this for 10 plus years that when they're playing with new people, new to the scene, and well actually, what they would say is when they were playing with people who were new to them, but were not new to the scene, had been doing BDSM for a long time, had had other partnerships before that, that they already had this kind of set in stone mentality of like, this is what a scene is about. And then when they would say, how do you wanna feel during a scene? How do you wanna connect? They go, I don't know, whatever's fine. I don't know. I know what I want to feel. 
They just had no answer for what to experience emotionally at all. But with newer people that hadn't really yet gotten to that point yet, they were much more open to talking about the emotions they wanted to get into. Whereas the more experienced people were much more concerned with like the technicalities of, I wanna do a three-up TK and I wanna do this kind of suspension, I wanna do this, that. But they weren't able to talk about the emotional feelings. So for new people getting into the scene, for people that wanna have new partnerships, wanna play with new people, actually anyone at any stage of doing kink anywhere, the number one thing outside of the safety basics, like vetting and negotiation and all that, that you can do to make your kink experience better is to introspect and learn about your emotional relationship to kink. What makes you feel here? What makes you think here? And if you do things with your genitals or you wanna feel your genitals when you're doing kink, what makes you feel down there too, right? Because that answer is going to be different between scenes, between people, between different kinks. And I'm gonna keep saying it because I feel like I've really gotta hammer this home. You are going to have better experiences if you are in touch with your feelings. And if you don't really know what those feelings are yet, you could think about how you emotionally want to feel in the scene based on like a favorite movie, favorite musical genre, specific song or album maybe even. You could also think about maybe video games that you like to play. Really any media representation that shows an emotional component. It could be an art piece, right? You'd be like, I wanna feel like this, I'm gonna put a painting I like on screen now to help me out here because I'm really bad at remembering the names of paintings. Like, I wanna feel like this, right? And then that gives you a starting point to have a conversation about, okay, you wanna feel like a romantic comedy. Okay, does that mean you wanna laugh a lot? Does that mean you want to be lighthearted and silly? Does that mean you wanna focus on the romance part of the rom-com or the calm part of the rom-com? Like, that is a good thing to get started with. Also, this could look like having a feelings chart. I have this in the back of my own negotiation checklist worksheet thing because I think you can be on the same page about I wanna do electro play with this thing for this long on this equipment with this kind of role play and then you go to the scene and one of you wants to be an evil experimental doctor where it's all pure sadism and you were hoping for a fun, light-hearted, sensation play scene between two friends and not doing any role play at all. So you gotta make sure you're on the same page with those feelings and knowing what those feelings are. And that can be scary because oftentimes with kink, we feel really guilty, we feel a lot of shame about what our kinks are, and you have to be able to work through that initial feeling of guilt and shame about, I shouldn't even like this at all, to be able to get into, okay, how do I wanna feel? What feelings does this bring up for me when I think about it? Is it about feeling lighthearted and giddy and release? Is it really deeply romantic? Is it very deeply vulnerable? Is it something where I wanna feel really afraid? Do I wanna feel scared? Do I wanna feel challenged? Do I wanna feel like I am testing my limits, testing my boundaries, testing my body? Do I wanna feel like I am floating and free. It really can be anything, but you gotta know what they are. And again, I love having a feelings chart for this to get started. But really, what this is actually about isn't even just feelings, it's about not getting stuck in modes of thinking about something and really being open to the possibilities because I think it's very tempting for new people especially to want to know the right way to do things. I need to know how to do this. Am I doing this the right way? And that is why mentorships are so appealing to a lot of people is you think, okay, I can trust someone who will know what they're doing to teach me everything that they know so I know I'm never gonna make any mistakes. And making mistakes is very much part of the kink experience. And also, just because they're a mentor does not mean they know everything or will know you or your personal style. but. With new folks, it is tempting to get stuck into a place of like, I need to know the formula to make this thing happen. And then they get stuck in that formula. They get stuck in the labels. They get stuck in a mode of being where it's like, well, okay, well, I'm a kitten, so I do this. I'm a princess, so I do this. I'm a male submissive who loves genitorture, so I'm into this. And 
getting stuck in those labels, it's a very fine line between the labels being helpful and then being unhelpful and sticky and causing you to just remain in one place and staying static with your kink. And if you've been doing kink for a while and you've discovered that if you are confronted with the question of how do you wanna feel or how does this make you feel, you end up going, eh, I don't really know, or I don't know, whatever you wanna do, or I'm not really sure, I think anything's fine. That's a good sign you've probably been going on autopilot in your kink and you might wanna stop and pause and check in and really make sure is this kink, is this relationship, is this dynamic, is it still working for you? Because it might not be. It might not really be feeding you here even if, if it makes you feel good because I'm doing this the right way or other people can see me play like this or I get to do this thing aesthetically that looks how I want it to look but isn't really feeding me in here. And we re get really hung up in the community about things visually that people really enjoy. People get really into collars or they get really into brandings or heavy impact play scenes or tons of bruises because those are external signs of like, look at this kink I'm doing. I'm doing this correctly. Look at all this stuff I get to be proud of. But is it really what you want? Like, I guess if you're an exhibitionist and you're really into people seeing your bruises and marks, that might be fulfilling on its own. But if the play you did to get there wasn't making you feel something on its own, was it really worth it? Or are you just going through the motions because that's what you have to do to be a kinkster? So I guess what I'm trying to say is don't get stuck in these like, pathways of thinking of just only focusing on the technical over the emotional and the connective, I would almost prefer to overvalue the emotion and the connection over the technical versus undervalue it because if you can get to a place where you're really in touch with what your feelings are, it's also going to help you keep in touch with, should I be playing with this person? Is this kink good for me? Is it destructive? Is it taking away from my life? Is it, you know, those sorts of important questions where when you are just thinking about the technical, you might go, well, they're technically competent. They know how to throw a flogger. They do the aftercare I ask for. They're very perfunctory. They're, you know, they're doing everything in order. But if the emotions aren't there, then it might not be actually something that's really giving you what you want. And it might not actually be a super great partnership. I do also wanna say that thinking about things emotionally can help you understand the dynamic you wanna have in the space with your partner. Because I think it's also even easier to go, okay, I wanna feel this, which is a different question from how you wanna to relate to the person you're in a scene with. Because you can say, I wanna feel afraid, and that could mean I wanna feel afraid of my partner and I want there to be lots of resistance, or it could mean I wanna feel afraid because electricity makes me afraid, but I wanna feel safe and secure in my partner and that trust in my partner will help me do the scary thing. So even in that, you also gotta think about the relationship with the partner you wanna have, right? Do you want it to be a lot of like strong resistance back and forth where they're really pushing you, but you're also really pushing back? Do you want to be led in the scene where they are doing more gentle guidance and you're going along the pathway? Do you want to be more of a back and forth where like the moment is punctuated with elements of like strong resistance, but then being overcome and then following? Like there's lots of ways to do a particular scene where you might be able to say on paper, it's a flogging, it's this, it is this, but then the actual execution of it emotionally makes the scene very different. And if you can't talk about that ahead of time, it's going to be very hard to do it in the moment, like with the scene that Midori did with the flogging that was sort of a scene, but also a demo and like five other things all at the same time. Like, it was like, I wanna be like your high school bully, but also I kind of like you. And that was the emotionality they went with during the scene. And you could see that and how they interacted and the way that it played out and the way that the play sort of brought out a certain, personality, I guess I'd say, in the bottom partner that was participating in this and how it affected the way their scene was going. Anyways, I feel like this is very 
loosey-goosey and like hard to explain and I don't want this video to be two hours long so I guess I will just say like the number one thing you can learn as a new person is that labels can be good don't overvalue them such that you get stuck in them also beyond the labels stay in touch with yourself emotionally with your partner talk about how you want to relate to each other talk about what emotions you want to feel what they want to feel how you can emotionally connect during the scene and even if you're not doing things with you know super complicated bondage or ties or really intense impact play or costuming or whatever you can have a really fulfilling scene just with super basic skills i want to make sure to say that because i don't think i quite said that yet is if you want to do bondage you can have an amazing scene knowing a single column and a double column tie and that's it you know have the safety supplies on hand know the risk factors for nerve injuries and stuff like that but like once you know that you know the risks with very little actual skill needed, you can have a really freaking amazing scene. And I guarantee if you are showing up to have a fun, connective, emotional experience with vulnerability at the heart of it, where you are allowing your partner in somewhat into your private sphere and vice versa, and you're reading that in the scene, you're staying in that moment, and you're going back and forth with that, you are going to have a more amazing scene than going to the super competent bondage top that knows all the most complicated ties that will give you a bondage ride but won't necessarily emotionally connect with you and to be clear there is value in aesthetics there is value in things that look pretty and feel good without it being about the other person but i am someone that i think the more i learn about kink and the more i learn about how other people are doing it the more I realize that the parts of it that really feed people is that emotion, are the feelings, are the connection, and the prescriptive adherence to like punishments. These things are, they're not hurting people necessarily, though they can be in the case of punishments especially, but they may be missing out and not really doing what you think that they're doing for the player, for the relationship. So. Don't be afraid basically to go past what other people might say is like, oh, well, you're supposed to do kink with, you're supposed to look this way. Like, be iconoclastic. Don't break the rules of the space you're in, but don't feel like because everyone else is doing a scene this particular way, I have to do a scene that way. Even just taking really small steps, like moving around during the scene, not using a piece of furniture, even not having that in place can sort of jerk you out of maybe the rut you've been in or how you think things should go enough to really change how the experience ends up going from that point onward. But yeah, as long as you're having a fun time in here and your partner is too, and you're leading with that and not with the community expectations of a paddling must be like this, a flogging must be like this. If you're leading here, what you gotta do okay that's that's really the secret that is the secret sauce of bdsm that people will miss is the reason we're doing it is because of here here and down there for some of us but not for me personally but for a lot of people and i want to make sure that that is also validated and included that's it that's everything thank you all so much for watching i would love to know your thoughts in a comment down below i don't normally do rambly videos like this i'm trying to do them more because some people really like them but they are contentious i do i'd say a six to one split on non-ramble to ramble videos if that matters for you we do all kinds of kink and bdsm education on this channel if you would like to if not already please go ahead and subscribe to that if you would like to see more again please again leave a comment about your thoughts questions ideas your experiences and a comment down below and finally if you want to really support what i do the best way you can do that is with patreon a link to that will be down below if you do already support me over there. Thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.